Hi and welcome to a CDH TV gameplay video with me, Pontus and Redrick. As always, this time joined by Proxy the Goat. Yo! So today I am playing the Grixis Marchesa Dealer of Death. This is a controlling mid-range commander that will give you some form of card draw whenever you try to kind of interact with an opponent or targeting something your opponents are controlling. But still, it's a Grixis deck in general. So you're gonna see the typical stuff with like Undual Breach, Lions of Diamond, Tainted Pact and Fessas Oracle. But we can also win the game with Hullbreaker Horror and our commander as well. As well as Barry and the Master Wizard and Doxed Extortionist. Hi hey everybody, uh, I'm playing Shanid, the Sleeper Scourge, Mardu sort of mid-range stacks commander. The sort of thought process is if we shove enough value engines and stacks pieces into the list, if all of them can trip, it should be enough to get us there. Now we do still have some combos, we have Heliod Ballista, but we also have sort of an incidental combo with Rhinotravic of Urborg and Boromir. If we have Mayhem Devil Out, lets us ping the table down. Other than that, we're just looking to grind out and value out the game. So today I'm bringing Stella Lee, wildcard. This is a Storm Commander. Uh, this exact crew is from Josh from Elder Dragon Highlander. Main goal of the deck is to play a bunch of untapping effects that untaps our commander which we copy with her, and then repeat that effect infinitely to repeat the untap and another effect to draw our deck, kill our opponents, make infinite mana, whatever that may be. So let's see if that works. Me, I'm doing Pirate Metal or Malcolm and Vile Smasher. This is the second deck of the two that I just keep rotating to get more practice with them. Typical Grixis sort of packages, uh, you know, things like Thassa's Oracle and Demonic Consultation, all the things that Mons had mentioned. We also have some abilities to do wheels and things of that sort with Orcish Bowmasters. All right, so here's a thought. I'm tempted to keep this because Dockside, <laughs> really. There isn't much I could do beyond that, unfortunately. I mean, I have Tainted Pact to fetch up some things. Um, I can't get Malcolm out on turn one, maybe turn two, if my opponents play uh, fast mana and things like that. And I can also punish them by making non-land, uh, non-basic lands, mountains. That would also punish me because I'm looking at three. So while I think this is interesting, and then we have Dr. Deluge to maybe wipe the board. We're playing at least one creature heavy deck against one that is might be interesting to try, but there's just not that much gas. So let's go ahead and pitch. All right. So in a similar predicament, I mean, we have Force of Will. We can pitch with Mystical Tutor, but we're going to need that Mystical Tutor. We have a piece of interaction. We are playing two other opponents that are in blue, if memory serves correctly. But again, not much we can do right now with this material. So I'm gonna pitch again and go to six. So this got a little bit worse. I mean, people have, if I waited three turns, I could play Jessica's Will, but there's not much. All of these cards in my hand, except for Ad Nauseam, are three mana. That's just me sitting around. Turn one. I mean, if we, even though we're the first player, it's not gonna benefit us. So I'm gonna go to five. I think that's what Grixis likes to do anyways. Okay, I am much happier with this package uh, that we have here because we have Mana Crypts, we have Pyroblasts and Phantasmal Image. There's just a bit of interaction there is a couple of the lands, things like that, that I can play as well. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is pitch Ashok, and I'm going to pitch this Swamp and then work from the rest. So I've got a Malcolm on turn one. I've got some mana I can play with. Not so much on the card draw end, which sucks a little bit, but we'll, we'll take it from here. All right, take it away. So this time is kind of interesting, but all in all, it just doesn't do enough. We do have a lot of pieces that we would want to get to the win. We do have a Wincon in hand, we have a Tutor, but we don't really have mana. And we don't have the colors. Like, we have the three mana to do stuff turn two, but we don't have any red source. Or we do have red source, but like not blue and red. And we don't have a way to tutor any action other than what we have. We don't have a second blue for model for like a dock side. We don't, we're just missing a lot of pieces. But like, Born Upon a Wind, model for dock side with a twi twitch in hand is actually pretty good. But this is like turn three commander, turn four, try to storm off, and that's not good enough. So we'll move on this. This hand is similar. Uh, we do have more mana here, or more colored mana. We're in a spot where it would be like a personal two to turn one, and I don't really know what we would find. There's not really anything wanted to cast on two. Like the best thing would be kind of like Jessica's will or a combo piece, but that's still just a turn three commander or a turn three spell seeker, probably commander, and then turn four try to go off, and that's just not good enough either. So let's go to six. There we go. This hand is interesting. We do have a turn one commander, which is nice. We do have a deflecting spot to break there. Sadly, Thundering Falls is our second land, so we don't have two mana on tap turn two or turn one. But I think this is just good enough because, like, if we can, if you get to cast the Merchant Scroll, 
or the spell seeker we can find like anything free and then we just have instant speed draw deck which is really good we're still looking at like a turn three do stuff here but i think it's overall good enough hopefully draw a second untapped source for mana so we can turn to merchant scroll it's, it's a bit awkward with the fact that we can't cast to wait am i convincing myself not to play cast do this on I might be convincing myself not to keep this. I feel like it has to be good enough, though. Sure, our turn two is kind of sad, but we can have a sad turn two, a sad turn two, and then just have a really strong turn three. And I think we will. Yeah, maybe it's a bit awkward, but I'm gonna try it. It's really slow, and we're going third. So because of that, we are definitely going to mullet. Um, our second seven doesn't look any better. In fact, it looks much worse. There's some value that we can lean but it's just not it's not where we want to be now this one we've gone to hell we've we are burning so if we kept this we would probably be putting the beseech the mirror on the bottom turn two tiny bones that's it so we'll go to five doesn't look fantastic but there's so much catch-up potential there's so much there's so much catch-up in this that's gonna be a catch-up joke but i'm just thinking about the hand hmm so we would bottom Ballista and Delmi. Or we could bottom Ballista and Flagstones. That would give us three turns to draw land for the Fire Covenant or for the Delmi. And we would have Pest Control on turn two to sort of equalize things if need be with a Fire Covenant to follow it up. We keep this hand. I don't have that much to say. This hand is amazing. We're gonna snap keep it. We have a turn one Ragavan into a Mana Crypt and then a Hex Parasite that can remove counters from various permanents. So yeah, we're gonna get our commander turn two and to get it with a Ragavan, and yeah, we should be digging forward towards something with this. Let's play. We will draw a card. Then for turn is a command tower. Mana Crypt, tap those two for Malcolm. And then I pass the turn. Take my turn. Land for turn will be a Thundering Falls. The land is tapped and I will surveil. That card can stay on top. Yeah, then I'll cast a Jewel Lotus. Exile a Simian Spirit Guide, crack Jewel Lotus to cast my commander. And then I'll pass my turn. Alright, on top of people draw, we're just gonna play a sheet of the Death Storehouse and pass the turn. I'm gonna draw a card. I'm gonna go Misty Rainforest, sacrifice it, finding a volcanic island, using that to cast a Ragavan Nimble Pilferer. Last thing I'm gonna do is cast a Mana Crypt and pass the turn. I will untap and roll for Crypt. Heads, I'll take damage. Heads. Okay, three to the face. I'll draw a card. Land for turn is a Misty Rainforest. I'll crack it and fetch. Fetched up an Underground Sea. Move to combat. I'll attack Proxy for two. Uh, no effect. Okay, damage goes through. I will make a treasure. And I'm going to do the thing that we don't really do in CDH, which is cast File Smasher. <laughs> and if File Smasher is okay, I will pass the turn. Go to my turn. Land for turn will be Mana Confluence. So here I have a couple of choices. Keep my refocus to draw a card at some point. I don't think that's actually good. I think I'd rather keep it because it's a combo and I need to cast three spells to have Stella be live. So what I'm looking to do here is basically the Merchant Scroll. And Merchant Scroll is kind of interesting here because we don't really have any clear cut alternatives. I guess maybe it would be easier with the Spell Seeker where we could play Spell Seeker turn two. So haha. <laughs> Uh, maybe actually keeping refocus was wrong. I, I I did think of that a bit too late, but having both of them feels good. I just need to find the mana to be able to do anything with it. So basically, we, what we usually do with Merchant Scroll, I think, is to find a combo card, but we already have two of those. We can't really find mana. We can find like a snap, which is, but that's just basically just a free spell. So what I'm considering doing here is to just find the fears, because if we do that, we do, we basically never lose, and the moment someone does anything, we try to win, or we draw our deck in response. We don't win instant speed without a lot of mana, we don't really have that. So I think that might be the call for us. It feels a bit weird, uh, because I, I hate tutoring known interaction. Uh, I hate tutoring counter spells with Merchant Scroll. If Merchant Scroll was an instant, I would love it here, but it isn't. So it's basically just a counter spell or like a muddler mixture for dog side, I guess, or maybe intuition another problem is tutoring tutoring for anything other than our combo pieces tells our opponents that we just have one of them and that's not how i like to play personally but i think that's just the right call here we could also find like a mystical tutor but that's a bit clunky here one upon win is also relevant but we don't really have anything to do with born except just cast it 
If you draw the land next turn, we do have Born deflecting Swat and then win instant speed with Born. But I think I think Fierce is just the right call here, even though it's a bit weird and not what I like to do. So yeah, let's see how our, the table reacts. I think they're gonna be onto me, but I'm not sure what they'll do about it. So yeah, let's just try it. Tapping two to cast a Merchant Scroll. Merchant Scroll resolves, and I will find a Fierce Guardianship, and then I'm passing the turn. So I can do something does not hurt the contest. I will crack my Arid Mesa, go fetch me uh, a Plateau, cast a Pest Control. So it's a new card from Outlaws of Thunder Junction. It's white and a black for a sorcery uh, that has cycling for two. Um, that says destroy all non-land permanents with mana value one or less. No, buy Dragavan, die. And mana, and mana crypt. Mm -hmm. That was sad. I have a response with that on the stack. I will crack the treasure token, making a red and point a pyroblast at Pontus's commander. In response to that, I will fierce the pyroblast. Fierce stops my pyroblast. And um, I need to roll randomly for you, one of you to take one damage from Vile Smasher. I'm going to roll a six-sided die, and Pontus will be one, two. Proxy will be three, four. Mons will be five, six. Here we go. Roll to three, so Proxy, you take one whole damage. Yes, I pass the turn after Pesco. Yay, we were golden <laughs> one turn ago. Draw a card, Flooded Strand for an Underground Sea and pass. Untap and draw. Okay, I'll move to combat. And I'm going to attack Mons for two. I take two. Fantastic, I will make a treasure. Um, then I'm going to put a Flooded Strand into play. Go ahead and pay a life and fetch. Fetched up a Volcanic Island. I will tap Underground Sea and Command Tower to cast a Demonic Tutor. Demonic Tutor resolves. Let's go find something. But before that, we have to roll again for File Smasher. Let's roll a six-sided die. It's a four, so proxy. You take two. There's the card I found, and I pass turn after that. Go to my turn. Land return will be a City of Brass, and then I'll pass turn. All right, cool. We didn't die. I'm going to pass the turn. What happened to this game? What have someone done? Draw a card. Play bad land. I'm here to cast commander. Marchesa, dealer of death. Here we go. Pass! Untap and draw. I really like when multiple opponents have mana up. So <laughs> tap three, cast Glenhorn Buccaneer. And we have to roll, fellas, to see who gets three to the face. Pontus, you take three to the face. I rolled a two. In response, just to see if I can find any responses, I'll tap two to cast a refocus starting Stella. I will untap my already untapped creature and draw a card. Still in response, because the refocus didn't draw anything that stops you. Stops you. I will deflecting spot the Glintorn. Trigger Stella. So deflecting spot is interesting because it doesn't say target spell with targets or anything with targets. It just says target a spell. You may choose new targets. For and uh, yeah, you can target anything. Uh, any trigger, any spell, anything even though it doesn't have targets. So I'm casting Defecting Spot and I gain a Stella Trigger. Stella Trigger, Exiles, Mind Break Trap. <laughs> Not live, notably. <laughs> Defecting Spot resolves. Then I'll pay a blue to cast a, a uh, Cerulean Wisps targeting my commander. And in response to that spell, I will tap Stella to copy it to, with her ability. Fire Covenant paying 4, 8, 10, 13. I'll kill everything that's on the field. So I can't get, kill Glinthorn, obviously, because it's not in there, but everything. Can I convince you to let my commander live? Pretty please? That's a hard... How are you going to make this tempting for me? I don't know. You get to keep for life. <laughs> no, I think killing your commander is worth the four life. All right. The board wipe happens. The fire of the Covenant destroys all. Since my commander got destroyed, both the copies of uh, Cerulean Wisps fizzle because that's how magic works. They have no targets, so they don't happen. Well, Glenhorn is on the battlefield. It has haste, and we'll just send the pirate at proxy. Damage resolves, and I pass the turn. Thwarted. Go to my turn. I'll tap three to cast a Spellseeker. Uh, I'll be putting a Ponder in my hand and passing. And in my end step, Mind Break Trap goes away. All right, let's 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 do this. Untap, upkeep, and draw. All right. We're a little sad. We're gonna tap three and we're gonna play Delny. After our Delny resolves, if it resolves, uh, I will be passing the turn. And I will untap. Here's our mana confluence. I'm gonna cast a Fellow Stone, and then I'm gonna cast a Birgi God of Storytelling and pass the turn from here. Start us off, I'm going to first cast Phantasmal Image, targeting Birgi, or becoming a copy of Birgi if it resolves. That happens, I'm happy. 
I will then cast Mana Vault and make a red from my copy of Bergy. Then I'll crack the treasure, making blue. I will go down the red, tap these three, and cast Malcolm. I will then move to combat and I will attack Proxy for two. Uh, he only makes one treasure from this, right? Oh yeah, great. I will block. I have one red floating still from Bergy, but I can't do anything with it, so I will pass turn. Go to my turn. Tap a blue for a ponder. Ponder resolves. I look at the top three cards. I will put them back in that order and draw this card. And then I'll take damage to cast a Mystic Kumar. And with Fish and Play, I'll pass the turn. All right, let's do this. Untap, upkeep, and draw. We cry a little bit. Sadly, Proxy can't do anything, so we draw a card for turn. Well, we did top deck a really good card. Here is a Mnemonic Betrayal. Pontus can draw a card. I'm offering charity. Mnemonic Betrayal resolves. I'm going to cast the Mana Crypt. I'm going to tap this command Mana Crypt to cast the Demonic Tutor from uh, Retric's Graveyard. I'm going to find this card, an Orcish Bowmaster. Then I'm going to cast an Orcish Bowmaster, generating a new red from Birgi. ETB deal one damage to Retric's Malcolm. Then we're gonna cast the Yule Lotus, generating another red, and Pontus gets to draw a card. When Pontus draws the card from the Yule Lotus, I will deal one more damage to the Malcolm, uh, killing Malcolm. With the remaining red mana that I've gained from Birgi, and using Volcanic Island here and Yule Lotus, I'm able to cast my commander Marchesa, Dealer of Death. Then we're gonna cast Delny, the Streetwise Lookout, from Proxy's Graveyard. This is gonna generate another red mana. So I have a total of one red mana, I'm gonna use that to cast the Pyroblast up there, targeting Pontus Mystic Remora. This is gonna give Pontus a card draw, and when Pontus draws a card, I will have two Orcish Bowmaster triggers. And uh, with that, we're gonna put, uh, let's go, two at Retric's face. This is gonna gen... Actually, we're gonna send one to Birgi and one to Retric's face. This is gonna trigger my commander twice, so I will look at the top two first. Okay, yeah, that's a, a no-brainer. We're gonna put... Wait a minute. Maybe it's good to actually... I'm in a very good position. Nah, we have this one. And if we're lucky, we get something different. So we're gonna put the Pact of Negation into the graveyard. Was really considering keeping that, but it's still happening. Then the second one, we're gonna put this one into the graveyard. I haven't played a land for turns. So we're gonna play Steam Vents. I have one more red mana floating from Birgi from casting that Pyroblast. And with that, we're going to cast a Dockside Extortionist. Now, Dockside count is amazingly one, but because of Delny, it becomes two treasures. Yeah, still, we're getting some treasures. So, Mimoni Betrayal and Burgi are kind of cute together with... Whenever I can spend mana of any color to cast spells with Mimonic Betrayal, and whenever I cast something, I gain a red mana. The Ponder from Pontus is basically free to cast. So we're gonna Ponder. Looking at the top three, uh, we're actually going to shuffle the library. Shuffle and draw one. Then we're casting Cerulean Wisp to untap something, uh, this Delny. And draw a card. We're going to cast a Merchant Scroll. We need to sacrifice one treasure to do so. And with that, we're going to find a Fierce Guardianship and put that into our hand. We're sitting in a pretty good position. Whenever someone triggers Bowmaster, I will have two Bowmaster triggers and two Commander triggers. So we have a value engine going for us. We basically just need to draw into some form of a win here. And I kind of just want to make sure I'm sitting with some counter spells to protect my position. We're going to attack at Retric for free damage. And then I pass the turn. Well, Mons, my man. All right, we will we will untap and take a damage from Mana Vault, then draw a card. Land for turn is a bad lands. All right, well, we've got to at least make Mons use his stuff. So uh, we'll see. Let's go ahead and tap three. And I'm going to pay four life to cast Toxic Deluge for four. Minus four. Yeah, we're going to Fierce Guardianship that one. This is going to trigger my commander because I'm targeting something I don't control. So look at the top two. We're going to put Gemstone Caverns into the graveyard and keep this one. All right. You have Fierced my Toxic Deluge. So I will pass after that. Go to my turn. Land for turn will be a set of traitors. I'll tap five to cast my commander. With my commander play, I'll cast a Mox Amber, triggering my commander. I will exile a Mr. Rainforest, and then I'll pa pass the turn. Untap, upkeep, draw for turn, put a Dranic Magic Tree on the stack. I will pass after that. I will draw a card. I'm gonna Marsh Flats and sacrifice it. Gonna find a Blood Crypt and shock it into play. 
I also take free damage from the mana crypt. I'm going to cast Imperial Recruiter, gaining a red mana. I'm going to find a Displacer Kitten. I'm also going to cast this little cutie kitten using one of the red floating mana I had and three more lands, putting the flickering meow into play. Time to go to combat. Pontus, I'm attacking you with my 4-4 four, four, and I'm attacking with Delny at proxy Let's march this. and but. Birgi at proxy as well. Uh, no blocks, take 4. No blocks, take 6. And then I'm passing. Let's go ahead and untap. We take a damage from Mana Vault and we will draw a card. First things first, let's tap 2, cast my own Dockside. Dockside resolves, I will then make 3 treasures. Nothing else really to do, pass turn. Take my turn. Notably, Dranith says cast, not play. So I will play this Mystery Ring first from Exile. Uh, that will trigger my City Traders. And I'll tap it for two in response. I will fetch my Mystery Ring first. Finding a Volcanic Island, I'll use my two colorless floating to cast a Visit Signet. Then I'm passing my turn. All right. Uh, let's do this. Uh, untap, upkeep, okay, draw. All right. We did it, folks. I'm going to start with this Mox Diamond. Uh, assuming that assuming that's good, I'm going to ditch this Baradur. Then I'm going to tap four, attempt to cast a Shield Grid. I'm going to go to my turn, untap, I take, lose two life from Shouldred. Heads is damage, flip tails, no damage to the, from the mana crypt. I'm going to cast this Lion's Eye Diamond, generating a red mana, triggering Displacer Kitten, flickering Orcish uh, Bowmaster, and by the way, because of Delny, I also get a sec uh, secondary Delny trigger, uh, this place a kitten trigger, so much mech right now, triggering, triggering, triggering. We're also flickering Doxed Extortionist here. In response to your two display kitten triggers, I will have one floating to Lightning Bolt Kitten. I was waiting for something that I could uh, actually use this on. We're going to respond with a floating a colorless actually and gaining no, wait, we are already floating a red mana, so we're using the red mana we had from Birgi, hard casting a force of negation on the, the lightning bolt, triggering kitten twice, targeting the same creatures. All right, seems like the time to interact, so I'm going to tap two and cast a Cyclonic Rift, the baby version, targeting Delny months. That is a little bit annoying, but we're going to let that happen. Delny can uh, uh, go back to Proxy's hand. I'm gonna play on the safe side here. I will respond to the first negation, using my blue floating, tapping one more for a board upon the wind, triggering Stella, exiling a consider. You can resolve this, you can draw a card, trigger my bowmaster, trigger my commander too. Born resolves, and I will draw a card. And I will ping prox face for one, triggering my commander, using the floating red mana that I had to draw. In response to your commander's trigger, I will tap three, taking two damage, to cast a Cursed Mirror. Now that you're tapped out, one, two, three, four, five, hard casting, force of will, triggering my commander a second time. Triggering Kitten to flicker Imperial Recruiter, actually. So I will resolve the Marchesa trigger that is from the Force of Will using this Blood Crypt here. Looking at the top two, we are going to put Cyclonic Rift into the graveyard and keeping this one in our hand. And then Force of Will will resolve, countering your Cursed Mirror. We're also resolving the Imperial Recruiter Flickering, finding Baron Master Wizard. That's a good one, putting that one into my hand. In response to your first negation targeting the lightning bolt, or in response to kitten triggers target <laughs> on the first negation targeting the lightning bolts, uh, I will tap Stella to copy lightning bolt targeting Dockside. I have a response, I will tap mana confluence to cast fluster storm, trying to counterspell your copy of lightning bolt. With this, I'm going to flicker imperial recruiter again. No, wait, we're flickering uh, the mana crypt. We're flickering the mana crypt with the Displacer Kitten. And we're generating a red mana. And I'm also generating a Marchesa trigger that I'm going to use uh, Birgif's mana to pay for. So I will resolve my Marchesa trigger by casting Flusterstorm on your copy count lightning bolt. So much stuff. I will look at the top two. Let's put this one to the graveyard and uh, keep this one. Now's the time to crack these treasures, so I will make three, nah, we'll say blue. After Retric has cracked his treasures, Dockside will make an flicker effect, and so will Orcish Bowmaster. Orcish Bowmaster will deal one damage to Proxy's face, 
and I will make four treasures. I would have made a lot more if Delny was still here. And then Force of Negation counters Lightning Bolts, and because my Orcish Bowmaster and Dockside have already been flickered, the original uh, Displacer Kitten effects also fizzles. So Lions of Diamond here finally resolves. And the uh, Mana Crypt also flickers. And I'm paying one mana with my from my Birgi to dr look at the top two with my Marchesa when I flickered uh, Orcish Bowmaster. We're going to put uh, Bloodstained Mire into the graveyard and keeping this one. I'm going to cast a Red Elemental Blast by sacrificing this treasure, generating a red mana from Birgi, using this to destroy Pontus Blue Commander, and then using the red mana from Birgi to pay for Marchesa. With this, I'm also going to flicker Doxed Extortionist, generating four more treasures. So we're up at seven treasures, we draw two, and we're gonna put this one into the graveyard, keeping this one. I'm gonna use one treasure to cast a reanimate. With this, I'm going to flicker Dockside Extortionist, and I'm gonna reanimate the Fimage, Phantasmal Image, from Rhetoric's graveyard. So I'm going to trigger Marchesa, and I'm going to also trigger my Displacer Kitten to flicker Dockside. I'm going to pay one treasure to pay Marchesa, go up to nine treasures. I will look at the top two, put this card into the graveyard, a uh, command tower, and I'm getting a Fimage into play as a copy of Displacer Kitten. We are kind of sadly starting to run low, but we're going to cast Baron the Master Wizard using Mana Crypt and two treasures, generating a red mana. I'm then going to channel Orawara Soaring City on my... or actually on uh, the Glintorn Buccaneer. Let's remove the Glintorn Buccaneer from this board state. This is going to trigger my Commander Marchesa, and I'm gonna use the remaining colorless mana that I have from Mana Crypt to trigger her. In response to this, I'm going to sacrifice the Lion's Eye Diamond, discarding land, 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 and a random artifact that doesn't do much. With this, I'm going to have, let's go, three black mana floating, resolving the Marchesa, looking at the top two, putting this one into the graveyard, keeping this one in my hand. So I made a small mistake. I forgot that Hex Parasite and my commander... So Hex Parasite is a cool card that removes counters from target permanent, and that will trigger my commander. And I forgot the part where you don't actually have to remove any counters. You can just target a permanent that have no counters on it. So it's basically two life to trigger my commander. Uh, however, we're fine, because I drew into Wishclaw Talisman. I'm gonna to cast it using two black, generating a red, then using one red to activate it. I'm going to give the Wishclaw Talisman to Proxy. And by the way, I'm flickering Dockside Extortionist and Orcish Bowmaster doing this, generating four more treasures, going up to 10, and dealing one damage to Proxy's uh, Dockside Extortionist. No, uh, to Redrick's Dockside Extortionist. Then we are casting the Underworld Breach, generating a new red mana from the Birgi, flickering Dockside. Now we have given away the Wishclaw Talisman to someone. We are also flickering uh, Dock's Orcish Bowmaster, going up to 15 treasures, and the win here is imminent. Now, fun fact, there is a funny card in play called Dranite Magistrate, so my breach doesn't do anything right now, and I'm hellbent. But we have an enormous amount of mana, and we have a Baron Master Wizard, so we just bounce the Dranite Magistrate here. And now we can sit and cast cool cards from the graveyard called Lion's Eye Diamond and Imperial Seal. We're going to begin by casting Imperial Seal to put Brain Freeze on top of a library. Then we're going to cast Lion's Eye Diamond, and uh, basically whenever we cast, when we actually cast the Imperial Seal, we're going to flicker Orcish Bowmaster and flicking Dockside Extortionist. With this we're going to generate a Marchesa Trigger, and we're going to generate mana from the Dockside Extortionist. Then we're going to put a cool, we're going to put a cool card in our hand. We're gonna cast the Lion's Eye Diamond, flickering Orcish Bowmaster again, flickering Dockside Extortionist again, generating more mana, finding the card with our commander that we tutored for with Imperial Seal from the Marchesa Trigger by casting the Lion's Eye Diamond. The thing I'm finding with my Marchesa Trigger is going to be Brain Freeze. And here I have the Andal Bridge, Brain Freeze, Lion's Eye Diamond assembled, and I have a Fassus Oracle in my graveyard, and I want to end this game. This got very mechanically. 
Also with Baron Master Wizard and Dockside Extortionist, we can flicker Dockside Extortion or return Dockside infinitely to my hand, recasting it, gaining infinite mana, because with the Wish Claw I have the magical number to go infinite with Baron Master Wizard, and from here I can flicker my Orcish Bowmaster infinitely and win that way. So there's a lot of different ways we can win from this point. Regardless, mega victory! So it looks like the Spacer Kitten, Orcish Bowmaster, and Doxed Extortionist won this game, but in hindsight, I want to emphasize that Mnemonic Betrayal was the one that made me explode. It basically set me up in a very dominating board state, like I mentioned, and then I got to do the very cool thing with Paradox Engine stuff. Honest, all honestly, there was so much mechanic and stuff that I enjoyed feeling the old Paradox Engine feeling of trying to storm through your decklist by making cool triggers that I forgot that I could have won the game in other variant variations, but it was cool to play out to see more variations of ways to win the match. But yeah, the big takeaway here is that Mnemonic Betrayal, really good. For sure, it is one of the best cards in the formats. Yeah, one of them, definitely. I should have realized earlier how awkward my hand was, like my starting hand. There were so many moving parts that just didn't work, so I got online way later than I was expecting. And then I kind of overextended in response to Rhetoric's win, just because I realized I had no free interaction for a Glintorn in play. Otherwise, I could have played way more greedy and not overextended into the board wipe. But yeah, that left me kind of behind for the rest of the game. Thought my opening hand was going to let me do, and I was kind of banking on trying into some mana because I couldn't just keep mulling down cards at that point. I just, I just really couldn't get my foot, my footing after the my two in, my two big interaction plays. I mean, yeah, I, I made the attempts, and uh, yeah, it was fun to just play to the outs, see what happens, right? That was an amazing big game. Hope you enjoyed the battles. Take care, guys, and we will be back next week with another match. Hey, dog!